up guys what's up what's up what's up hey howard what's up man welcome back we we are back uh with a brand new shark and uh it's gonna be a killer one actually <laughs> i'm really excited about the big eye sand tiger uh so this is a really really extremely rare species uh that is terrifying and i Feel like it's very appropriate uh, to be listening to Subnautica, um, Subnautica tonight for this species in particular. I'm really excited. The vibe is good. So, but how, how have you been, Howard? It's been it's been um, quite. A, it's been a couple days or a couple weeks actually. Um, my little brother got married last weekend, uh, which I'm super excited about. Uh, it was an awesome wedding and really beautiful. And I I'm honestly been emotional all day uh just kind of like 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 to actually to be completely honest if i if i act kind of weird tonight it's just because like it's just been a lot of emotions uh good emotions but like just like a lot of emotions it was a pretty pretty exciting weekend but hope everybody's been well hope you've been well uh it's good to see you again man and uh yeah i guess we could uh dive in i first first things first uh Thank you so much for submitting, uh, Howard Care, your awesome artwork on this species. So, uh, yeah, big eye sand tigers are very, very rare. Uh, we don't have a lot of images or uh, footage of them at all. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I just saw your comment. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's really good, actually. Like, um, like. Uh, oh, good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Um, yeah, because it, it was. It was a bit of a hiatus. It was, you know, like 14 days. That's a, that's a long time. Um, so, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Um, and that, that, that um, like any any fun any fun plans or activities. I like kind of like. Because I'm sure, like like even like up in like, Canada, Canada the weather's, the weather's still pretty still pretty warm, you know, you know, just like, just like you know, good good summer good summer time stuff. stuff. So, um, um, like yeah, yeah, yeah like uh, the wedding was really good. It was really funny. It was funny. It was like kind of classic classic wedding wedding story where like there was a lot I think a lot of different people were were like like stressed, you know, planning kind of to the build up. And then once we got to like the bachelor party and then everything else, like like. Uh, uh, it was just, it was fantastic. just fantastic. fantastic. So, so oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I just saw so, the comment that the audio was fuzzy. fuzzy. Uh, uh, let me know if it comes back. Uh, I'm sure I don't have too many things open right now. So, um, and it could be the Subnautica music. I hope it's not, because I definitely want to keep keep this vibe for this particular species. So, um, but uh, yeah, let me check everything on my end. And uh, just, just to kind of, um, you know, kind of give a brief overview, I, I hope people can hear me. Um, I'm actually trying to remember uh, how we picked this species because, um, like, I think I mentioned during a stream a couple of weeks ago that I was getting really irritated with, like, <laughs> like Megalodon people. And I, as in, like, Megalodon, um, like, like, people who think Megalodon still exists when it, when it does not. Um, it's a prehistoric shark species, um, but I think I was kind of like ranting. I think I did that. I forget if I was like talking to a friend or if I was on the stream. Not too many images for the shark. You chose it. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is okay. Now I remember. Now I remember. Sorry, Howard. I, it's brain's a little weird today. So okay. So yeah, that's exactly what happened. So um, I was kind of ranting about, um, and I forget kind of what set me off, but it was like I was ranting about megalodon stuff. Um, because it's, it, I feel like it's one of the biggest pieces of, like, misinformation about sharks out there, um, when people say Megalon still exists when it doesn't, and I think, um, you know, and again, for, for the record, it used to exist, it was an awesome giant prehistoric shark, and it is not to be found today, because it is too big, uh, and it can't survive, um, when, I mean, like, like it, 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 it was a, a whale killing shark that you know just got too big for its ecological niche and just you know we would have run into it by now if, if it was still existing today but more importantly kind of part of that rant was uh just highlighting species um you know oh having trouble getting photos to match drawing too much glare <laughs> yeah like um yeah it's it's tricky like um uh so for this species uh this is like an actual deep water monster. Like I think I think people like um, yeah, megalodon is overstudied. Yeah, I mean like like it's 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 like 
it's overstudied and it's just overemphasized in pop culture. And I think there's two reasons why. Like one is that it is the biggest shark to have ever lived. So it really does make good like popcorn movie material. Um, that's why we have the two Meg movies. Um, you know, just like, you know, it's, it's a charismatic giant thing. It's like a, a marine T-Rex. So of course it is very appealing. You know, it's a really cool, you know, thing that used to exist but it's uh, you know just like the t-rex it's not something that exists anymore and it, it really is detrimental to like overly focus on it and take the focus away from actual sharks that are actually around today like the big eye sand tiger like this thing is terrifying and big and like you know lurks in the abyss um which brings me to the second point of why megalodon is so appealing is i think uh people are attracted to just the idea of a giant monster in like an underwater canyon waiting to come out like a pacific rim kind of deal you know like i think or or even godzilla like like all the godzilla stuff like i think i think people find that really exciting and compelling and you know i mean i get it you know i, I get that it's, it's it's pretty cool and pretty fun but it's just not you know it's just yeah. I think people take it too far, you know, and the, again, the biggest point is I think they take the eye off the ball of the reality of the abyss, which is like, it is actually still terrifying. <laughs> like, like, you know, the deep, the, like the deep sea environment is a, like, like, I, like, I don't think people understand how deep and enormous, like, and cavernous, like, like the, 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 like, the open ocean is or like the deep like deep water habitats are and like how exciting and terrifying it is that large sharks like this species or six gill sharks um you know just are roaming or greenland sharks are just roaming around and like they're amazing in themselves and again they're huge i mean they they, they get to be enormous so um yeah so for this species i mean let me let me just pull up really quick like look at that that's a real animal like that is a real shark that exists in our in our world today so this is tonight's species the big eye sand tiger um and it's just like please like forget forget the meg like this is the thing that we actually could use more research on uh, what's exciting is like i think the shark is probably the best poster child of like if you want to find a deep water monster shark study this like look for this because we actually really do not know a lot about it and um yeah there's a lot of research that just you know needs to be done so uh yeah this is a really good choice odontaspis neuronhi so but first before i, I guess i dive in uh any any further uh howard this is awesome thank you so much for um submitting this piece um, I really like the two views of this species. Uh, so especially like, I really like um, this one right, well, sorry, let me make the whole image bigger. Um, I really like the, like, uh, uh, sorry, my screen is freaking out on my end. Can you see? Is the screen uh, going bla black and white on your end? Uh, sorry, it was really spazzing out on my end. Um, okay, I think we're okay. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, uh, I really love the emphasis, like the contracranium looks really pronounced. Um, and I really like that because I think this is kind of like, um, like one, this, this is definitely like knowledge of like, you know, like, like when you see like preserved shark specimens, um, you know, like the skin kind of like merges to the contracranium and you can kind of see the structure of the contracranium more where like you have an eye ridge and like you have like the jaws kind of protruding like and I really like that detail and like it's it's probably not as exaggerated in life on this species but like I, I personally really like that detail and I would really love the amber eye um, that's really really cool and honestly uh, I think you said this uh, earlier uh, this is we do not have a lot of material on the species at all there's no footage on uh, I could not find anything on YouTube I don't think there's any footage period of uh this species if there is please um anybody leave a comment or um just just a link in the chat below because you know i would love to see it um there's a lot of uh, uh footage of odontaspis ferox which i was really surprised by there's actually a lot of small tooth sand tiger footage but there's not a lot of big eye sand tiger footage uh, actually there's no big eye sand tiger footage which is i mean it's cool it's uh, you know I, you know i know we'd love to see this shark move but it's kind of cool in a sense like it's a mysterious animal so but anyway 
Um, I love the fins and the proportionality of the fins. Uh, I really appreciate like this cool detail of the claspers of this uh, individual on the underside. And the most important thing, uh, Howard, you nailed the uniform coloration of this species. It's actually something that kind of is like, I wouldn't say distinguishing, but something that's kind of like an important attribute because classic sand tiger sharks, they do have the counter shading. I think to a degree, the small tooth sand tiger has counter shading as well, but this species is like a uniform color. So I thought that was a really cool detail and um, I really appreciate you uh, just sharing this piece of art. This is awesome, and a Hawaiian grouper, uh, which is fun because like I think this species, um, one one of the most important records was actually in Hawaii uh, as far as identification uh, for the species. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll dive into that more. So thank you so much for submitting this. Um, tonight's actually also going to be fun because I've mentioned uh, FAO guides before, uh, Food and Agriculture so uh, Organization guides, which are actually really cool shark guides, and we we. I think we've opened up one or two, maybe just one, um, but I've found, um, oh cool, they coexist, awesome, awesome. Um, I, I found uh, three, at least three, uh, each one including the species, and um, you know, just in case we run out of big eye sand tiger material, which we might because again, it's a really rare shark, those guides are awesome, and they cover a lot of different uh, shark species, and uh, I think they're really actually worthwhile for anybody interested in sharks or anybody uh, you know involved in um, any kind of like research oper operations or even like com like fishing you know commercial fishing like you know you need to identify these species properly to make sure that you're not landing um, uh, a endangered species or species that is actually protected so those guides are really important so we'll have those on later um, and I'm really glad we're able to I think this is a really good shark to kind of like you know frame the guides around so but yeah let's dive in to this species specifically first the big eye sand tiger so i love i'm so excited about this shark uh this thing is crazy um all i know about it and we'll check the sharks of the world guide in a second um all i know about it is that it is a member of odontaspididae uh, the sand tiger shark family uh it's really cool to point out that this is now kind of a unique-ish family where there's only two species. Um, there's this species and then the small tooth sand tiger. And then very recently, the classic sand tiger shark has been reassigned its own family, uh, Carcaridae. So, um, so this is kind of a unique group. Um, and I believe this might be the rarest lamniform shark. Um, I, and I, I give pause to that because Mega mouths, I feel like, are pretty rare. Uh, I think crocodile sharks are kind of rare. Um, but then again, I mean, you know, mega mouths have footage. You know, this does not have footage. Um, so this is this is this is like, if you ever see this, like this is like you you won like some amazing lottery. Like this is one of the rarest sharks um, you know you could ever find in the world. Um, and I don't think we know really too too much about its distribution. I had uh, one of the FAO guides up, and like this is like the identification drawing, and it's like really eerie, you know. I mean, it's really cool that universally this shark has a very, um, in, in terms of like photographs or depictions, that is, it has a very unique appearance. It just, it, it's it's spooky. Like like it has these, these enormous ghostly eyes, these creepy like projecting teeth, just like a classic sand tiger, um, and like I love that it has this uniform like brown or dark coloration i mean it is a freaky shark it is a freaky freaky deep water shark so um yeah i'm i'm super excited to be talking about this species uh tonight so um let's check out fish base's profile um and like even even this i mean look at this this is just a stupid uh you know a, a preserved taxiderm specimen you know like it this this species is so rare this is the holotype uh like like this species is i shouldn't say it's stupid then sorry about that uh but this species is so rare that like you know this is the fish base photo or the main fish base photo is just this preserved specimen like you know we don't really have a lot of material on it um we do have some more creepy photos like <laughs> like 
Um, these are the giant eyes reflecting in the camera light. Again, note that uniform dark color. Uh, what's kind of cool is that the uniform dark color suggests that this is a shark that really spends all of its time in the depths. I think they've been landed in shallow water a couple times, but um, really, this is a species that it's like, if you're uniform, like, it, it, like this is this is like a twilight zone, midnight zone species. Like, if you're uniform color, it's it's probably to your it, it's of best advantage to a species that spends all of its time in the darkness or most of its time in the darkness. So, um, yeah, I, oh man, I love that it's like you know we all know sand tiger sharks, but I love it's like this dark side version. You know, it's just cool. Like like it's just ah oh, man. Uh, here's a nice view of the underside. Again, look at that in universal color. I think uh, on the last stream, because I did tease a photo of it, uh, Howard, you made the observation that it looks kind of like a six-scale shark. Uh, or not six-scale shark, sorry, a frilled shark. Because um, one of the photos, this photo, you know, has the bright red gills and the uniform brown color. And it's actually kind of cool. I wonder if that is something that is... Um, what is that called? Is that convergent uh, evolution? What is that called again? Where two different groups of animals um, evolve similar traits. Uh, I think it's convergent evolution. I forget. I forget. Please, please let me know what that's called again. Uh, but, uh, any future viewers, but uh, or commenters. But um, basically, like it's like if two distinct groups of animals evolve similar traits. A uh, great example are like birds and bats, or. Um, or even like whales and sharks. Like whales and sharks are completely different, but uh, they both have fins or similarly shaped fins uh, in terms of like adapting to their marine environment. Similarly, with this species um, and the frilled shark, those are completely different lines, you know, like uh, completely different orders. But they do have similarities in the sense like the color is really similar, the habitat is pretty similar, and then those gills are similarly a bright red. Um, I wonder how much of that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I like, are all gills really that color? And, you know, shallow water sharks, you know, cover their gills more, you know, smoothly? Or, I don't know. Or is it, or is this bright red color something to do with, like, oxygen and oxygen count at depth? I don't really know. I, I, I actually don't know if that, if there's something going on there or not. But, um... Convergent evolution. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, th thanks, Howard. Yeah, I thought I thought it was that, but I just want to make sure. Uh, it looks ancient. Yes, it is so cool looking. Um, and I love that lamniforms. I mean, lamniforms are, in, you know, they're an older order. So, you know, they had their uh, super time in, or like their their dominant time. Is it the Miocene or right before the Miocene? Let's check the shark, the fossil shark t timeline. I guess like Oligocene, Eocene, like, because I think Miocene is when Carcharoniforms really exploded, uh, if I remember correctly, like, like as far as like um, evolution, like biodiversity. Um, but anyway, Lamniforms is an, a very old, you know, it's an old shark group, um, and it is really cool. It looks like the gills were exposed by the tackling. Gotcha. Yep. Sorry, I was uh, rambling about that. Um, yes, I think you're right about the, uh, the line uh, pulling. Uh, pulling the gills to exposure so but anyway um yeah like uh land forms is i i, I compared to the most modern sharks because carcharoniforms is the most specious order now um you know it's it i mean yeah it, it's older than most sharks um and it, it is really cool that it has this kind of like ancient look to it and like look at the size of that mouth compared to like the head um, I love that, like all uh, mackerel sharks, uh, it has this nice bulbous conical snout. So I really love that no matter what kind of shark it is, a sand tiger shark, a poor beagle, a basket shark, or a great white, you know, they all kind of have that similar head shape, like that conical uh, classic laminiform shape. I guess, I guess crocodile sharks don't have that, but most of them have that, you know, and goblin sharks, I guess goblin sharks don't really have that either, but most of them have that, so. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Let's check out some fish base notes. Let's get back here. So, I don't really trust this map right here, so we'll check the IUCN red, uh, red list map in a little bit. So, Ontontaspis means, um, Odontos means tooth, aspis means shielded, 
However, I always thought Aspis meant like Asp. Oh, there we go. Yeah, like Viper. Like, like so I always thought of that as like Serpent Tooth. Uh, so Onant Aspis means Serpent Tooth. Uh, Naranhai is in, in honor of Adolfo Cesar de Naranja, late director of the Fonchal Museum where Holotype is housed. Gotcha. So, okay. So where this apparent uh, specimen is, um, is a museum uh, where... Uh, I guess the director is uh, like the late director of this particular museum. Um, this is this is where the name Odontaspis Naranhai comes from. It is an honor of him, so that's cool. Let's see. Um, I believe holotype is the. Let me sure. It's probably a good good night to talk about those again because um, we've talked about holotype and paratype before, and that they're actually really important. Um, in biology, so okay. So this, what we're looking at right here, this picture is the actual specimen, the actual individual upon which the description and name of a new species is based. So the very first time, you know, scientists use the word Odontaspis naranhai was assigned to this species, and then any other shark that they see in the wild has to look like this species for them to confirm, okay, or like this this individual, like this specimen, they have to have the same features as this specimen to confirm, like, okay, this is a big eye sand tiger and not any other kind of shark. Um, I always get confused about holotypes and paratypes and all that stuff, but, um, but holotype is like the core, like the first individual to establish a new species, like the first individual discovered by science where it's like, oh, this is new. This is something we've never seen before. This is a new species. So this is the very first Odontaspis naranhai that we've discovered. Um, so, I, and actually what's really cool, I think I saw the thing here. So this species was just discovered in 1955. Uh, so discovered by Mall, um, G.E. Mall. Interesting. I don't think I've heard Mall before. But anyway, ooh, look at that. Man, this, this is such a cool looking shark. Uh, while we're here, I guess, yeah. So sharkreferences.com, uh, key features of the big eye sand tiger. Eyes very large without a nictitating membrane. Head flattened, snout conical, and relatively long. Uh, first dorsal fin usually over the pectoral inner margins. First dorsal fin much larger than the second dorsal fin and anal fins. Uh, anal fin posterior margins strongly concave. Caudal fin asymmetrical without slight bump uh, posterior to upper precaudal pit. Caudal fin lobe strong. Um, honestly, I kind of think this is an unmistakable species, and it's really just kind of like. The eye, um, I don't think small tooth sand tigers have an eye quite like that. But just kind of like the proportion of everything else on the body, like, I, I do think this is, like, a very charismatic, unmistakable shark. I, I, don't, I don't really think you can really easily confuse this with uh, its, its uh, fellow genus mate, the small tooth sand tiger. So, anyway, this, I know this is a better term than genus mate, so... <laughs> Oh, cool. Sorry, I just saw your comment, uh, Howard. Eocene or earlier is uh, um, um, is pre carcariniform explosion. So thank you. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. All right. This lives in a depth of 60 to 1,000 meters um, deep water. I'm kind of curious. So I, I think uh, there was mention... And this might have been in Sharks of the World, but there was mention of this shark might make deal migrations. So a lot of deep sea sharks or deep sea animals um, at night, they'll come up to the surface. Because um, I think a lot of prey items like to migrate to the surface at like, like from the twilight zone at night. And so their predators follow them. And so this might be why the shark can be found sometimes in shallowish water. But uh, apparently this lives in the Eastern Atlantic. Uh, Madeira in southern Brazil, eastern uh, central Pacific off Hawaii, may eventually be recorded from the western central Pacific, questionably occurring in the Se Seychelles. So, or Seychelles. Uh, I always get confused how to pronounce that, actually. Anyway, let's see. Body color uniform chocolate brown, all fins except pectorals with thin dark edging along posterior margin. That's cool. 
didn't, I didn't notice that actually. That's kind of hard to tell with like preserved specimen or sorry like like landed specimens that are, are deceased and this doesn't have a photo of the fins. And I was curious about that this thin dark edging on the margins of fins. Anyway, a deep water shark inhabiting continental and insular slopes, pelagic, ovoviviparous, embryos feed on the yolk sac, and other ova produced by the mother, so it is a intrauterine cannibal, just like shallow water sand tiger sharks. Feeding habits unknown. Um, Ophagy, yolk sac is absorbed, distinct pairing with embrace, yeah, there's not a lot known on this species. Fish base is usually pretty scant on information anyway. Oh, size. Here we go. So fish base is saying that this species could be three, uh, 367 centimeters. So that is about 9-ish feet, 10-ish feet. However, Sharks of the World says that this can be 4 meters. So that can actually be um, uh, 13 feet, 13 feet long. Oh, they found a black big eye recently. I just saw your uh, comment, Howard. Awesome. Where, 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 where was that? Um, I don't know if I had that pulled up actually. That's awesome. Like, uh, let's see. Kind of slight preview of. Oh wait, is it this one? I thought I did. Damn. Oh my god, this is so cool. Yes. Okay, it might be this one. Is this the one you were talking about? I think this actually might be what you're talking about. Um, and if so, this is so cool. So, okay, this was a new record of the rare big eye sand tiger, Odontaspis neuron high, uh, from the Northwestern Pacific with notes on dentition. So this was published in 2022. So this, I think this might be what you're talking about. And let me, I'm trying to make this as big as possible. This is so cool. Okay. Oh man, this shark is wild looking. Okay, the, <laughs> the shark is incredible looking. So, here we go. Yes, okay, awesome, yes, so this is it. So, here we go. So yeah, this is awesome to see. Uh, it is uh, that dark body color, but um, yeah, this is definitely, I would definitely say this is much darker than brown. Uh, this is like... Ah, oh, this is so cool. This is like a really, really, really deep brown or um, nearly black uh, individual. And like, look at th look how uniform it is. This is so cool. It, it's just like, this is, it's like, it's like Batman. I mean, it's just like, it's just so cool. It is just this one just thing, like this black shadow in the darkness. Like, it's so cool. Um, and like, you can see just like, you know, the proportion of the eye in relation to the rest of the body. And that's actually really interesting to point out because um, sand tiger sharks, um, usually like like the shallow water sand tiger shark has very tiny eyes, like like you know bright small eyes compared to the rest of the body. But this is like big bulbous, like ugh, creepy, creepy, creepy. Um, I also love. I'm noticing this now and appreciating this. I kind of really love like how big the jaw is in the back. You know, it almost looks like he's got these, like, cheeks uh, right here. But it's actually, like, it looks like it has a very strong jaw, uh, which is kind of cool. And the gill slits, I'm noticing now, too, are actually pretty huge. Um, if, I, if I'm if i seeing that correctly, let's check out. Like, in the identification drawing, not that big. Um, in this photo, they look pretty big to me. This photo, they do look pretty big. Uh, kind of like folded in here. I don't know, man. I mean, this photo, they look really big as well. I don't know. They, I mean, they, it looks like it has big gills, uh, you know, so I don't know. But this, this is extremely cool. Like this, this species, <laughs> man, this is a cool shark. Sorry. I, I don't have favorite sharks. I honestly truly do love them all, but like I do, I'm getting really excited about I, I always get excited about this one. I always love um, showing friends or like just kind of like as a party trick or like a cocktail party topic. Like this is a shark I do bring up quite a bit because n no one really knows it exists. Like like no one realizes this is something that's part of our world and like, you know, lurking out there like, you know, every day. It's so cool.
Now, I mean, you know, for people afraid of sharks, um, you know, you would never run into the species because it, you know, lives so far down. But um, still, uh, for people who love sharks, like, isn't it great? Like, <laughs> it's such a fantastic looking animal. So let's check out uh, the details on this. Um, in the Pacific Ocean, the rare big eye sand tiger shark, Otontaspis naranhai, has only been recorded twice, once from its central and once from its eastern part. Here we report the first record of this species from the northwestern Pacific, so that is kind of near Russia, Japan. Um, this specimen uh, measuring uh, 312 centimeters total length was captured off northeastern Taiwan from a depth of 100 meters in uh, in waters over 2100 meters deep gotcha so this was captured in the sunlight zone but over like you know midnight zone area like like really really deep water that's so cool uh this species was captured mid-december 2019 and was retrieved on 27th december 2019 when landed in port creepy creepy that's so cool so fun fact, this species was captured, or this individual was captured uh, during the time of Rise of Skywalker and cats. <laughs> and before, yeah, before the pandemic. That's crazy, actually. So, uh, yeah, cats, creepy movie. This shark, creepy shark. Rise of Skywalker, creepy movie as well. But anyway, man, that's so, so wild. Um, Photo of the fresh specimen, along with uh, morphometric and meristic data and DNA information are provided herein. Uh, dentition of the specimen is different from all other specimens by having two cusplets uh, at, on at least one side of cusps on most of the teeth uh, versus only one cusplet per side, and a lower tooth count, 29-29 uh, versus 34, 38, 37, 46. This record documents an extended distribution about 7,800 kilometers westward from the Central Pacific and provides strong evidence for the wide distribution and mesopelagic characteristic of this poorly known species. So that's really cool. Uh, let's check out let's check out the teeth in terms of like talking about the cusplets. So that's interesting. So that this paper, as far as this new captured individual, um, is talking about how each tooth has two cusplets, and then when you see the official photos of this shark's like dentition, um, there's only one cusplet on each side. Let's let's go through the photos and see if there's any any photos that has like two two cusplets out of curiosity. Uh, this, what's immediately striking out um, or kind of like striking to me is like this looks so similar to a shallow water sand tiger shark. I mean that looks. I mean, it kind of looks a little bit thicker on the sides, but honestly, I, I probably really, if you showed me this jaw set, I really don't think I would be able to tell the difference between this species and a sand tiger shark, like a classic sand tiger. Like it look, I mean, it looks a little, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I could, I would be able to tell that apart. Although there are some teeth, this looks weird, how these cusplets right here are splaying out. Oops, sorry, I did what I always do on this website. I went too far. Okay, we'll just stick to this. See how these teeth are splaying out? Um, that looks weird to me. That actually might be a giveaway. Because uh, I don't think shallow water sand tiger teeth look quite like that. So, um. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm just catching up on comments. Um. Uh, it's a shame we don't have live footage of that black one. Yeah, that would be so cool. That would be really, really cool. Uh, doesn't the dentition qualify it as a new species? That's a very good question. Um, what I'm really excited about, so this is 2019. You know, currently we're recording this stream 2023. Probably, there probably should have been research done at the time. Um, Let's check out the research list on this. So this was done by Xing Lai Ying, uh, or Win, I forget how this is pronounced, apologies. Uh, Qi Zhu Yu, Shan Hui Su, Xu Jian Zhang. Okay, I can't download this article. I tried to do it earlier, um, and this is kind of one of those, like, you gotta pay for it, which I can't stream something you have to pay for. Um, but 
let's check out when this was this was published in 2022 let's see if there's anything uh kind of suggesting in the research list on shark shark references.com if this could be a new species because howard you're absolutely right that's kind of a really that's a big difference um you know if the number of vertebrae can distinguish two shark species you know in the case of like the carolina hammerhead versus the scalloped hammerhead like the number of cusplets on teeth i'm sure is like yeah that's kind of a really important uh distinction so um yeah let's check it out let's check out sharkreferences.com and see what we can see this is a key this is cool okay skeletal anatomy of the big eye sand tiger shark its implications for lambda form phylogeny taxon ta taxonomy and conservation biology so this looks awesome i'm going to predict this is probably this was probably prepared before that individual is captured let's see if we can find this by stone and shimada Oh. Oh, we can find this. Okay, here we go. So let's just go through the abstract. Landiforms is a group of shark that consists of 15 species. That's that's wild that this order is so small actually. That's you know, this is one of the most charismatic orders in the world and it's like it's only 15 sharks. That's crazy. Oh, the most rarely captured landiform is the big eye sand tiger. That's so cool. Okay, new skeletal data then added to previously published morphology to conduct new phylogenetic analysis. Our phylogenetic study strongly suggests non monophyly of Odontaspididae that traditionally consisted of Carcharis taurus, the sand tiger shark, Odontaspis ferox, the small tooth sand tiger, and Odontaspis noronhi, the big eye sand tiger. Thus, the family Carcharidae is formally resurrected for the genus Carcharis to separate from the family Odontaspididae. So that's actually really cool. So I guess this is a groundbreaking study that was splitting up the sand tiger sharks, like I was mentioning kind of earlier. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. The recognition of the family Carcharidae is important to conservation biology because the extinction of C. taurus would not only mean the elimination of the genus Carcharius, but also the entire family Carcharidae. Our, our study demonstrates the importance of integration of both morphological and molecular information to understand organismal evolution. So this is really cool, but this is not um, this is not what we're looking for in terms of like is there any speculation that the big eye sand tiger might be multiple species? So let's let's keep looking. Um, I do appreciate that even though this one, this is another pay to play kind of thing or pay to read kind of thing. Um, most articles at least let you see the abstract so we can kind of get an idea of what they're researching. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, let's see what else we can find. Da -da -da -da. Hmm. Because some of these are pretty broad. Body forms and sharks. Feeding ecology. Some of these I think we've seen before because they're so broad and they, they like, um, there's a lot, there's quite a few studies that like talk about sharks as a whole. So like every time we do a new shark species on the stream, there's going to be some articles that will pop up multiple times because they're, they're mega studies like, or studies um, studying multiple species at once. Uh, this article. Oh, wait a minute. No, never mind. Uh, that's not it. Sorry, I recognize the name Shimada, but that was that was the the thing we just saw as well. This article, I did pull this um, this um, article referencing the megalodon. I think this was something that we also saw on an earlier stream, but uh, we'll take a look at that one later. Uh, let's 
check this out. No, we can't. Shoot. This one? I'm going to check the comments really quick. In paleontology, it would be a new species. Nice, nice. So, yeah, I think, honestly, like, I think you're right. I mean, again, if, if something is... Because, like, if, if we can identify species just with genetics alone, which is something we've done before, it's like, yeah. Um, I've said it a couple streams ago, but, like, phenotype relates to genotype. You know, phenotype is, like, you know, it's the, exam it's the um, demonstration of genotype. So... You know, if you have something that different, you know, than that, I think you could be right. Also, actually, you know what? Uh, check out the color, too. You know, because, like, I mean, what if that is something that is also related? Um, you know, in terms of, like, this is, this this individual, I mean, th that's kind of a long shot. And also, as a rule of thumb, uh, people should not be using color as a way to identify shark species. But, you know, this is definitely a, a brown shark, you know. This is definitely a brown shark. This one is definitely a very dark looking black-ish shark. So, um, I wish this photograph was higher resolution so we can get a, a, a nice shot of the teeth, but um, let's go back to, I was on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really see something suggesting what we're looking for, so I'm just kind of curious. This is the one we were talking about, the new record. Okay, so this is this is a study with this individual. So this study, um, this 2022 study, is the is this is the same thing. So let's see if there's anything going on. Okay, so I don't see anything suggesting that this could be multiple species, but this is also a very recent discovery. If this shark was discovered, or this individual shark was discovered in 2019, um, the article that it's related to was published in 2022, and, you know, that's a really worthwhile research question. Like, hey, if this actually has two cusplets on at least one side of the cusp of most teeth versus only one cusplet per side. Like that's a really major difference. That's a big difference between this individual big eye sand tiger and other big eye sand tigers. So if anybody is interested in a shark research question, this is a really good one. Like, is this a different species? Like, is this the same species? And this is like a different kind of like weird subpopulation with a different tooth morphology or is this actually a different shark species that's kind of you know one of the many that are hiding in plain sight so that is a really good research question and that's really cool and high five to howard for uh kind of bringing that up let me put a star on this comment doesn't the dentition qualify as a new species that is really cool um so thank you that's that's a really good question uh, extra cusplets, different tooth count, unless that's patholo uh, pathological or something, I would think it should qualify. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. That's actually, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I, I kind of overlooked that, actually. Um, the tooth count. Uh, so, like, every time, like, like whenever uh, you read something like this in a, in a, in a real bona fide, like, um, fish guide, uh, like, a great example is Fishes of the Gulf of Maine. Um, you know, it seems like overkill to be listing all these little details like tooth counts or vertebral counts and stuff like that, but it's actually extremely important because it is a way to identify species, like exactly, in terms of, um, hey, if these physical features are different, it could be related to the fact that, you know, these, th th this is a unique species with a unique population of interbreeding individuals, you know, like, like with like, so... Um, so yeah, like that is actually a pretty significant difference, 29 and 29 upper teeth and 29 lower teeth versus 34 to 38 upper teeth and 37 to 46 lower teeth. That is a huge difference, actually. So that's a really good point. And 
this might be a, a this might be a different shark. This actually might be a different shark, which would be so cool. So, excellent research question uh, for any aspiring shark scientists. Like, this is that would be amazing. Um, it's right there. You know, like, is this individual captured from the northwestern Pacific? Is it actually a big eye sand tiger shark, or is it something different? So, that's a really good question. Um, um, all right, let's, let's, let's put a pin, put a pin in, 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 here we go. The body, the body jaw is addiction links to the magic slab of slam of sharks. I want to put a pin in, in this, in this um, um, because, because this might be this might slightly, slightly related. related. Uh, uh, this, was, this was published, published or, or the new Sand Tiger Shark, shark uh, discovery. So, so, so put a pin in this for a second. second. I do want to check out Ice and Redless. I think it's important to check to check Ice and Redless from every shark species that we do. Just because this is such an important body as far as shark conservation. And uh, yeah, this uh, is the least, least concerned species, species, species uh, which is good. Which is good. And here we go. Here this is the biggest thing I want to see is the distribution. distribution. So uh, we don't really have a lot of information. And here are the areas where the big eye sand tiger has been discovered and theorized to be located. So it looks like we've got a range in Hawaii, a range in the central tropical Atlantic, uh, southern Brazil. I mean, these are such disparate places that it really would not be a surprise if, hey, there's actually multiple kinds of big eye sand tiger, because these are really, really, really disparate places. Now, the deep water environment is pretty uniform, and all oceans are connected, so it's not the biggest stretch to think, like, okay, maybe maybe a, a Pacific sand tiger, a big eye sand tiger, an Atlantic big eye sand tiger, you know, it could be the same species, you know, because the deep deep water environment is so uniform in temperature and pressure no matter where you are in the world but i mean this is a very weird spotty distribution like like these are really really like like this is such a rare shark that i'm just like you know i don't know i mean i i really would not be shocked if if there's actually multiple species um you know in in this complex so that would be really cool uh, let's check out why we're thinking this is least concerned. Uh, the Big Eye Sand Tiger is a large, rarely encountered deep water pelagic shark. It has been recorded from depths of 35 meters to a th over 1,000 meters, but appears to be primarily mesopelagic. It is possibly widespread in deep tropical and subtropical waters of the Indo Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, but its full distribution is unclear due to the sparsity of records. Very little is known of this species' life history, but is likely to have very limited biological productivity similar to other Odontodaspid sharks. The Big Eye Sand Tiger is rarely captured by fisheries due to its occurrence in the mesopelagic zone, where interactions with fishing gear are limited. Given its wide geographic and bathymetric distribution and limited overlap with fishing in the majority of its mesopelagic habitat, the Big Eye Sand Tiger is assessed as least concern. However, it is cautioned at any increase in catches as a result of shifting fishing practices, for example, deeper set horizontal long lines, could rapidly deplete local populations given the species' likely intrinsic biological vulnerability. So that's awesome. I kind of love that a lot. So this shark lives too far down for humanity. Humans cannot find this shark for the most part. You know, sometimes they can. But this is really a shark removed from the human world, which I think is incredible and super, super cool. Um, but I really do like that note of, uh, hey, that doesn't mean it's immune or invulnerable. Um, most sand tiger sharks are actually very vulnerable. Um, the shallow water sand tiger shark is critically endangered now uh, because of its biology. So uh, it sounds like this shark biologically is l most likely a shark that would be poised to extinction if it lived in a shallow water environment, but because it lives so far away from people, it is actually a bit immune. So I really kind of love that about the species. So, and uh, we really don't know a lot about it. There's no real extra notes on IUCN Red List, so we might go over to the uh, we might go over to Megalodon thing in a second. Southern Brazil is seasonal, gotcha. Uh, awesome, awesome. Southern Brazil is seasonal. So, yeah, I think when I said tropical Atlantic, um, I meant this little patch right here. So, that's a good, that, that, that's a good point, Howard. Uh, um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I just meant this patch right here is this tropical Atlantic zone, and then this this is more getting into the temperate zone to your point. So, but um, let's. I think this is probably a good time to check out some of the uh, field guides uh, because I think these are really cool. This one's actually not FAO. We'll check this back out in a, in a second. This is FAO. Um, so. Let's take a look at these, which is going to have um, illustrations and notes on the Big Ice Hand Tiger and a bunch of other shark species too. So, um, FAO, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, publishes these uh, regional species guides. They're very cool. They're open to the public, um, and I really love like each one has a unique flavor. So this one is uh, identification guide to the deep sea cartilaginous fishes of the Indian Ocean. So we could take a tour of this. Um, the artwork is beautiful, by the way. I always love the cover artwork of these guides. But uh, depending on the year it was made, um, the guides vary in quality from like gorgeous to like a little sketchy, you know? Um, some of them have like really interesting intros. Like here is, oh, Apistaurus larsani. This is the Icelandic cat shark. Uh, this is a cousin of the deep water cat shark that we uh, had a couple streams ago very cool uh, this is awesome this is a classification guide uh, or ident sorry identification guide of um, if you find a deep sea animal uh, how to classify it which is really cool very helpful kind of breaking that down yeah these guys are awesome I'm, I'm actually really glad oh here we go there's our, our our boy the frill that's actually a beautiful frill shark photo um, Sorry, we did not have that one on our field shark stream. That's a really, really cool photo. Like, you can actually really see a nice view of, like, just a field shark's unique mouth shape or jaw shape. That is really cool. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Sorry about that. So we'll kind of, like, zoom through. Uh, this is a really good one, actually. So this one's a little bit newer, but... Um, kind of going through different shark species. Ooh! Oh, this is brand new! Sorry. Uh, white spotted bullhead shark. I have never heard of this one. A uh, Heterodontus ramel hera. This is actually a brand new shark. I have never. Oh, look how. <laughs> oh my god! Wow! I have never seen this in my life. Look how gorgeous this is. This is crazy. I've never, oh my, sorry, sorry, I'm having a moment. Like, I've never seen that in my life before. I've never seen that shark. So, okay, that's completely beautiful. So cool. Let's see. Uh, Howard, just saw your comment. Uh, we don't even have a big enough sample to know their size for the Sand Tiger shark. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. An amazing shark, yes. That that was. Let, let's check that out one more time. That's just gorgeous. Like I've never ever seen a shark like this before. It, like bullhead sharks are always really pretty, but like that is absolutely gorgeous. That is such such a beautiful 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 animal. All right, let's keep going. Here we go. Now we're in the sand tiger sharks. So. Oh, check this out, actually. Look at this. Um, Odontaspis ferox, the small tooth sand tiger. It has a note, teeth prominent, long and narrow, with a central cusp flanked by two or three smaller cusplets. That's interesting. But the eye is definitely really small. So I, I know, sorry, let's, this is not a small tooth sand tiger, not, not by a long shot, so. Um, but that's interesting that this is a close sister species and it, did, it is talking about multiple cusplets in the tooth. So let's check out Big Eye Sand Tiger. Teeth prominent, long and narrow, flanked by central, central cusp flanked, or sorry, with a central cusp flanked by a single smaller cusplet. Okay, so Howard, I think you're onto something because as far as the identification guide goes, it's just talking about the one tooth cusp. But this guy has multiple. So this actually really, truly could be a, a, a new species. Oh, 
sorry. Let's go back. Body color black, chocolate brown or dark, reddish brown, uh, mouth long, spanning past the eyes, long, bulbously conical snout. I don't know. Like, this... That's interesting that, you know, the guide is just talking about this one tooth cusp. And then this has multiple, but they're saying this is the same species when it really might not be. It's really cool. All right, so I just kind of want to go through some of the rest of the sharks really quickly because I think they're really cool. Or I, I think this guide is really cool. This is our crocodile shark, which we talked about a couple streams ago. I think we've seen that photo before. Some threshers. So there's quite a lot of uh, squaliforms. Whoa, Scandalaceus uh, albicalda. I've n I don't think I've ever seen this one before either. Look at that. That's really beautiful. Uh, we did talk about Oxynotus. Um, you know what's kind of wild, actually? Uh, as far as the... the so far, uh, so this is August 2023. Um, uh, our uh, Angular Rough Shark video, that's that's actually the most popular one so far, like as far as the live stream goes. Like that, that one is the most popular so far. So that shark is so far the most popular shark. My theory is um, we're talking about so many charismatic species that... Um, I think they're kind of getting lost in the algorithm, but I think that one doesn't get a lot of attention, and so it's kind of breaking the algorithm, and it's uh, getting more attention for that reason, is my guess. So uh, This is really cool, Centropholus uh, granulosus, the gulper shark. I've told the story before, but this is the shark that I had a jaw set of, and it was a gift from a friend in a research lab. And I lost that jaw set, and it is one of the worst things I've ever done because it is one of the rarest jaws you can get in the world because this is one of the rare sharks. Or, or maybe not one of the rare sharks, but this is a really rare shark to find. So, one of the worst things I've ever done. And I promise I won't spend... Oh, this is cool. Bird beak dogfish. Um, I won't spend too much time on this because I do want to get back to the sand tiger shark. Uh, I just think this is kind of cool um, going through these guides. And again, um, yeah, since I won't spend too much time on this, um, all FAO guides are um, free and available. So um, at your own leisure, if you're a viewer, uh, just Google FAO uh, shark guide or FAO fish guide and you'll find you know one of uh, many there's there's quite a quite a few so this is actually a lot I, I didn't realize how many squall forms there were so we'll we'll go back to um, looking up some more material for sand tiger sharks or, or sorry big eye sand tiger sharks but uh, they're they're really good guys so um, yeah Awesome. Yeah, what a great resource. Yeah, yeah, I, I love these. Um, uh, we'll check out another one just for the sand tiger shark. Uh, this is this one's Eastern Central Atlantic. This one might be a little bit older. But I love how they kind of make these more regionalized. So we're going to zoom ahead to where I think the sand tigers are. Let's see what this page brings up. And I'm asking it to do a lot. Okay, so this actually, this this guide is humongous. So this is including invertebrates. So we'll keep going ahead. Check out this. So this is clams. Hmm. It will load. Sharks, there we go. Hello. That's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, this one's going to be a bit older, so this is probably going to just have black and white drawings. I do love um, FAO guides have essays about the area. I think that's actually really cool. Um, this, oh, this is great. This is a dichotomous key, so this is actually a pretty good one that 
uh, it gives you two traits and you have to compare if like if you landed a shark um, you have to compare it to the traits to identify what species it is so this is actually a really nice in-depth one that's actually a really good dichotomous key kind of bringing it down it's like once you answer a question for example eyes behind mouth deep nasal oral grooves connecting nostrils and mouth you go to step 13 or if the eyes are partially or entirely over the mouth you go to step 14 you just follow the it's kind of like choose your own adventure actually uh dichotomous keys are really very much like choose your own adventure you have two options you have to make a choice and you eventually get to um the shark that you want to research so or the shark that you think you might have so this is really cool and uh, yeah this is actually pretty in depth so and it's black and white, but these are actually very good drawings. Um, I know I'm kind of zooming through these really quickly, trying to get to our sand tiger shark, but I could tell at a glance these are actually very good diagno diagnostic drawings. So uh, some of them are actually a little familiar. Uh, I think some of them have been repurposed across multiple research um, resources. So. Here we're getting around the squaliforms. These are the dogfish sharks. And we actually might get, a, I hope we get like a cool essay on um, the big eye sand tiger. Let's see. Uh, still dogfish. These are the angular rough sharks, which are the fat, squashy, happy dogfish. Uh, Delacius is kite fin sharks. There we go. Now we're getting to angel sharks. We're, uh, I think we're here. We are here. These are the landiforms. All right, here we go. There we go. Okay, so there is Crocaris taurus, the shallow water sand tiger shark. There's Odontaspis ferox, the small tooth sand tiger. And here is Odontaspis neuronhi, our big eye sand tiger. So, all right. Actually, this is kind of, there's quite a lot of information. So let's uh, kind of check it out. Okay, synonyms, Carcaris neuronhi. Okay, so that's no longer valid. Really nice lateral view of the head. Creepy drawing right there. A large shark, head with five medium large gill slits and uh, all in front of pectoral fin bases. Um, oh, I forgot about this. So uh, one, one cool thing about the guides is that um, you see how some, some words are bold and some are not. The bold words are the ones that you really want to look for. Um, those are the most important traits for identifying the species. So. The biggest traits for the species are snout moderate, moderately elongated, bulbously conical, so as a bulbous snout, eyes very large without nictitane eyelids, a single moderately long cusplet on each side. Yeah, you know, they keep talking about this, but Howard, again, I think you're right. I, I, they keep talking about this cusplet thing as like, yeah, this is a very important aspect of Odontaspis neuronhi, but, you know, I think you're right that this actually could very well be a different shark. Because, yeah, they're really leaning into this, you know, as like, this is a diagnostic characteristic, but it's like, you know, yeah, this, this shark does not match, you know, so... Um, let's see, a single moder- yeah, we talked about that. Two, sometimes one or none rows of small symphysal teeth in the upper jaw and 48 rows in the lower jaw. Upper interior set, teeth set in two rows and separated from the smaller laterals by one or two lows of tiny intermediate teeth. Two dorsal fins closer to the pectorals and the pelvics. Well, uh, free rear tip will ahead of the pelvic origins. Second dorsal fin smaller, and the first and nose would larger than the anal fin. Oh, I see. I got you. Yeah, okay. Um, ventral caudal lobe hardly developed? That's really weird. Wasn't there a guide that said it has a very strong ventral caudal lobe? Hold on. 
Look at that. Oh, this is weird. Look at this. Okay. This is really weird, actually. So in this guide, it says the caudal, the caudal lower lobe is strong. And you can see it's kind of like a big lobe right here. But in this guide for the same species, it's saying the ventral caudal lobe hardly developed. And I don't know. That seems a little, I don't know. I mean, this is an older guide, so maybe it's been updated, but it does seem a little, that doesn't seem to line up, so. Color, glossy black, brownish black, or dark reddish black on entire body and fins. Usually a gray or whitish patch on the first dorsal fin, no spots on the body. Interesting. So, I love that there's a lot of notes. Uh, let me double check the comments. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, habitat. Uh, very deep water oceanic species. It occurs on continental in and insular shelves near the bottom at 600 to 1,000 meters more depth may migrate vertically during the day, rising to the surface at night. Uh, seasonal occurrence as long line catches off southern Brazil, suggesting possible geographic migration. Nice. Uh, biology poorly known, presumably ovoviparous, uh, eplacental viviparous, feeds on cephalopods and fishes. An incidental and rare bycatch of oceanic and deep benthic fisheries using pelagic and vertical long lines, but little utilized. They live below the depths fished by fishing operations with horizontal pelagic long lines and persanes, at least during the day, and possibly too large to be a regular pelagic or benthic trawl catch. Uh, conservation status of concern, but poorly known. Uh, currently listed as data deficient. So this is actually an older guide. Possibly lives everywhere, but sporadically uh, in warm seas, but sporadically distri distributed. Oh, uh, also occurs in the Western Atlantic, including the Northern Gulf of Mexico off Texas and off Brazil. Interesting. All right, that's all we got. But, you know, it's a nice little, that's a nice little chunk of information. I think the diagnostic traits are interesting. So, eek. Um, Let's see, what else? I think I had another guide as a preview. Yep, I did have this. Here we go. Love this illustration. I think this is more of like an actual checklist guide. I don't think this was... I don't know if this is actually... Yeah. This this actually looks like this is more of a checklist. Or, or, or like an identification guide. Um, teeth on both jaws is one... Yeah. Yeah, it's talking about teeth on both jaws with one small cusp. but it keeps talking about this as like something unique to the species. So yeah, oh man, it's a good research question. Okay, I think this is, before we check out the Meg thing, yeah, I think this was the last, I think this was the last identification guide I had. And this is not FAO, this is something different. And I'm not, I'm not actually sure what this is, so. I think it'd be cool to kind of like take a look at it. Nah, this is awesome. This is definitely, this is kind of like an old, old piece of research, but. It's creepy, but I, I like, I like these like scanned photographs. It's kind of eerie in, in a fun way. Let's skip ahead to our sand tiger shark. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is a crocodile shark, so we're getting close. And I think this is in French. Oh, here we go. Uh, there we go. Oh no, it is in French. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hold on. Okay. 95, okay. 94, okay, here we go. Okay, Adontaspis neuron high figure 95B. Okay. Yeah, this is all in French. Shoot. 
I do not speak French currently. I do want to learn. I do want to learn someday. Um, especially since I do honestly want to travel to Canada. Um, specifically, I've always wanted to go to uh, the East Coast, um, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, uh, Quebec, or Quebec, and Newfoundland, and Labrador, and Prince Edward Island. Those are those are places I really do want to go someday. Um, and I, I, I like. Yeah, I know you don't need to speak French, but like, I mean, Canada is a bilingual langu uh, nation, and I don't know. French French would be cool to learn, and French is also such a beautiful language. So, anyway, all of this to say, I currently do not speak French. So, like, um, let's see. It is talking about the hall type specimen, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's talking about the, uh, look at this. This is, I think this is the tooth count, 38 to 40, right here. So, there we go. I'm translating based on things I can kind of identify. <laughs> uh, the depth range, uh, the brown color. That's cool. Anyway, so figure B is the big eye sand tiger. Uh, definitely making a point of, like, yeah, the lower lobe is kind of big. Uh, the eyes are big. Snout is short and bulbous and conical. Oh. But that's all we got. Um, yeah, shoot. Okay. I didn't realize this is French. I currently do not speak this language. Uh, Howard, do you speak French? And if so, I can hold this I can hold this up. Um, if you want me to linger on this, if you wanted to uh, you do not speak French. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. And then Quebec French is its own dialect. Oh, I did not. I did not know that actually. So, okay. So, I will speak. I will learn. I don't know how. I have no idea actually how I'm gonna go about doing this because I've heard Duolingo is pretty good, um, and I definitely don't want to do this soon because I, I just don't think I have time to like learn a new language, but. I'm projecting like a couple years from now. It's a project I really want to do, um, just because it's like, I don't know. I think it's important to learn different languages, and especially as one travels more. I, I mean, it's something I want to do. And French, being in a United Nations language and one that is widely used, I, I, I do. It's something. I think it's number one on my list of languages I would like to learn is French. So, but uh, yeah, so. None. <laughs> um, let's see. So yeah, I think those are all the FAO guides I had. So uh, I think what we'll do is I did pull this over this um, and ironically kind of bringing it back full circle. This is talking about the teeth of landform sharks, including our big eye sand tiger. But hilariously, uh, as much as I complain about Megalodon at the beginning of the stream, it is going to talk about Megalodon, so I guess the Meg lovers will be satisfied. But then again, it's actually, it's going to be talking about the actual Megalodon, like the actual prehistoric one, so that's not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, so we'll go through this. Uh, I think we did touch on this article earlier in the year, but uh, we'll take another gander at it in the context of the Big Eye Sand Tiger. And uh, while we're taking a look at this, um, if you have any suggestions for next week's shark, uh, uh, please uh, let me know, because uh, that will be... Um, I'm, I'm really down for anything. Uh, what's kind of cool about this year is we've covered quite a few lamina forms already, so I think my only suggestion is we should probably branch out to something that's not a lamina form, uh, but that's really it, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely down for anything, so... And it's also kind of fun, uh, August in my part of the world is peak shark month. Um, we have arguably the highest biodiversity of sharks this month, so, which is really cool. So, um, and I actually do like that shark week, you know, it kind of does correspond with like the peak time, uh, at least in the, like, in the mid-Atlantic United States, uh, where sharks are like at their peak. Um, biodiversity because uh, we have a lot of warm water sharks that come up for the summer so I don't know I kind of like how that correlates so but body jaw and dentition lengths of macrophagous lambdaform sharks and body size evolution in lambdaforms with special reference to off the scale gigantism of the megatooth shark Otodus megalodon by Kenshu Shimada who uh, he was talking about the big eye sand tiger in a previous study Martin A. Becker and Michael L. Griffiths. So let's check this.
this out. Oh, interesting. I would look for a Quebec educator. Okay, I, I will uh, make note of that, actually. Because, yeah, I, I, I probably will spend more of my time... I think I, I anticipate, as far as traveling, I probably am going to spend more of my time in North America um, as opposed to going overseas. And the reason being is, like, um, there's a lot of places on this coastline. Actually, there's, there's a heck of a lot of places on this coastline to do, like, you know, just just to be just to explore and, and like to be and like you know a lot of culturally significant biologically significant places here so i you know i definitely am prioritizing north american like coastline um i started this kind of project actually kind of on a personal note uh 2019 uh with the outer banks and i've been kind of like doing adventures um just around the coast uh you know ever since uh that so uh but yeah uh all that to say Quebec educator sounds pretty good uh, to kind of learn more of, like, the North Americanized French. Uh, so, awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Extinct landform sharks are well represented in the late Mesozoic, Cenozoic fossil record, yet their biology is poorly understood because they're mostly represented only by their teeth. Here we present measurements taken from specimens of all 13 species of extant macrophagous lamniforms to generate functions that would allow estimations of body, jaw, and dentition lengths of extinct macrophagous landforms from their teeth. That is super cool. So we're taking the teeth of what we know and applying them, or like, and, and pulling um, how big, like, if you have a tooth of this size, what kind of shark can we expect in terms of like, like a, sh a tooth of this shape and this size, you know, what does that correspond to, to our, our world right now? And then from that data, how can we extrapolate that to ancient sharks? So this is actually a really cool study. Uh, these quantitative functions enable us to examine the body size distribution of all known macrophagous landiform genera over geologic time. Our study reveals that small body size is plesiomorphic for landiforms. I really should know what that means, so let's check that out. Gonna Google on my phone, because I don't like Googling during the stream, I've, I, even though I've been absolutely guilty of it. Um, you know, just because I know it crashes my bandwidth. But anyway. Ancestral character state for a particular clad. So small body size is plesiomorphic for lamniforms. So that means, I guess, within lamniforms, big, like, sharks got bigger, but the ancestral trait was a smaller body size. There are four genera that included at least one member that reached over six meters during both the Mesozoic and Cenozoic most of which are endothermic. The largest uh, form of the genus Atotus, Atotus megalodon, the megatube shark, that reached at least 14 meters. That... All right, that's insanely big. That's insanely big. Hold on. Meters to feet. Hold on. That's insanely big. I'm not gonna lie. That's 46 feet. Uh, that's just insane. Eh. Sorry, I know, I, I, I really should not be leaning into the meg, but that, that is insanely big. It's truly an outlier considering all that all other known macrophagous landiforms have a general size limit of 7 meters. Um, endothermy has previously been proposed to be an evolutionary driver for gigantism in landiforms. That's really cool. However, we contend that ovoviviparous reproduction involving intrauterine cannibalism, a possible synaphomorphy of landiforms, to be another plausible driver for the evolution of endothermy achieved by certain landiform taxa. So that's actually extremely cool. That is an extremely cool study that... Can we read it? Oh no, shoot. Damn, okay. Well, man, we can't get into this. Okay, well, yeah, okay. It's a really cool study. Um, I guess the biggest uh, nugget of information we have is that intrauterine cannibalism may be a driver for the evolution of endothermy, so um, raising your body temperature higher than the surrounding seawater. But we can't get into the details of this article because it has a paywall, and I cannot stream something that has a paywall. Just like I can't like stream a movie, you know, like. Like, or you can't like play a movie in front of an audience outside of a movie theater. It's, it's the same principle, so shoot. Unfortunately, we cannot get to this.
uh, figures and data. Damn, we can't get to this. So I apologize for that. I didn't realize that this had a paywall. So it's a really great study. Um, shoot, we'll get out of here. So sorry about that. Uh, the largest, oh, I would say 60 feet. That's insane. <laughs> Uh, the largest tooth I know of was seven and th uh, three eight inches. Uh, tooth I know of was seven three eight inches. Do I have that? Oh man, uh, do I have that right, Howard? Like um, se seven three eight inches, which is still huge. Damn, that's insane, actually. I shouldn't even be asking that. This is this is like Monday brain talking. So sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> all right. I think um, we still have some time. We still have quite a lot of time, actually. Uh, oh, did we look at this? The skeletal biology? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, we did, uh, because this was talking about how Carcaridae is different from Um Let's see if we can grab some more pieces of information. Um, and if we can't, we'll probably wrap it up, and we have to, we'll uh, pick a species for next week. And probably, ideally, maybe a species that has more video footage. Because this shark, I love talking about this shark tonight. And we actually did cover a lot of information with this shark. But, um, you know, the, it's so rare that we just don't have a lot on Big Eyes Hand Tigers. So, I'll keep looking for articles uh, before wrapping it up. And then, um, we'll pick up shark for next week. But, let's see. I think we did the pictograph study a couple weeks ago, actually. Oh, that's actually cool. Can we get into this one? Mm. Uh, methods. No, we can't. Yeah, there's a lot that you just can't really get into. I think we did the phylogeny explains capture mortality of sharks. Um, I th we did check out that one. The Atotus one. We shape the evolution of modern sharks. This one I don't think we did. Can we do this? No, we can't. Oh, yes, we can. Uh huh. Did we get into this? Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry about that hold up. So let's check this out. This is actually in a bizarre way. Here we go. Identification key to a lasmer ring species based on dental morphological characters. Part B: Landiform sharks. Okay. So this is an article we can get into. And maybe, um, just tying it all together, this could relate to our theory of, like, is this its own species? Um, you know, as far as, like, you know, are they really going to lean hard into just big ice hand tigers having one cusp split? Because if so, that actually might, you know, be evidence that this, is, this individual that has multiple cusp splits is its own species, so. Okay. Apart from wet collection specimens, shark and ray museum collection specimens are often represented as articulated jaws or single teeth. In many cases, detailed information on locality, species identification, data on specimen's body are lacking. The identification key for jaws and teeth presented herein is part B of a planned series of dental identification keys. Um, Howard, I think you might like this a lot, actually. Um, this is actually cool. This is by Jürgen Polarspach and Nicholas Straub. Uh, Nicholas Straub is a name I've, uh, heard of before, actually. He sounds very familiar. Uh, here in Landiform sharks are in focus. Today, the order Landiforms comprise 15 species and 10 genera in seven families. All these large, active, pelagic sharks have a worldwide geographic distribution. The key is essentially based on the following characters. Dental formula, presence, absence of specific categories of teeth, um, parasympheseal intermediate teeth, form of crown, number of cusplets, and dentition type. The key allows the identification to genus and species level if adequate specimens are available. 
is further supplemented by a detailed species account. The glossary presented in part A of this series is extended by some terms that are specific for minor form sharks. This is really cool. This is really cool. For fans of shark teeth, this is actually extremely cool. Okay. So we'll just kind of skim this. Enjoying some music and... I'm actually drinking Sleepy Time tea right now. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Whoa, I just saw this. Uh, Gordon Hubble collection, he also had a meg vertebrae the size of a whale. That's nuts. This is so cool. And uh, Bull Shark. So, Howard, yes, uh, Bull Shark is an awesome suggestion. But actually, that was the very first uh, Dr. Jaws live stream. So this was before uh, you, me, Roy, Roy, Anya, Beth. Like this is before we all got together. Actually, so this uh, the bull shark is a is a deep, deep lore kind of. Um, I think the bull shark and the dusky smooth hound. And you know what? I think those are the two. I I forget if it was two streams or three streams where I kind of was just like doing it by myself. Like I was just kind of like, you know, kind of going through the information, um, you know, just kind of having fun. And like, I, I went, I, I started doing this project, you know, knowing that like in the very beginning, that's, you know, we're, there's not going to be really anybody on the other line, um, you know, or like watching. So like, um, you know, because I mean, it's, it's so hard to kind of like break into um, visibility and you know I just love sharks anyway so um, but it was really fun I think I forget where it started turning I think Roy Roy was one of the first people or maybe the first person who started watching it and then I think you Anya and Beth came on at the same time and then we've had people on and off around um, you know like like it's been getting like bigger and bigger um, but anyway long story short like the bull shark uh, was the very first one actually so it's Dr. Jaws number one um, so, but we, we've already covered that species, but there is the pig eye shark, uh, which actually gets confused with bull sharks. So I, we could try that. Um, I think that's Carcharinus amboinensis. It's a very similar looking shark. Uh, let me make sure I got that right. Cause that would be kind of a cool one to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh my god, I forgot how much they look like bull sharks. Yeah, what do you think about the uh, pig eye shark? You know, I'll send, I'll uh, type it in. Hold on. Pig eye shark. There we go. Um, and the reason I'm suggesting it, it looks very, very similar to a bull shark. So it kind of is like a bull shark redo, if you will. Also, uh, fun fact, and I, I know I said this somewhere on the Dr. Jaws channel. I totally said this before, but so bull shark is a species complex. If they actually one day um, split that name up into different species, I vote Zambezi shark as one of the species. Like, like, please name the South African bull shark a Zambezi shark. I would love that. That would be the coolest thing ever. Uh, whoever, whatever authority has the ability to do that, please name it. I'm petitioning formally to name the South African population of that species complex to be Zambezi shark. I think that would be the coolest thing ever. All right, awesome. We'll do pig eye shark next week. So, uh, carcharitis and boinensis. Um, that should be a fun one. And I would love to see that actually, actually because I think in life that's going to be hard to tell apart from bulls. So, let's see. Let's see. In contrast, uh, skin 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 in contrast to other, other groups of sharks, the sharks have carbon small forms. forms. Uh, the uh, mackerel shark has not experienced a large, large, large species, species, species since recent, recently. Carbon and carbon and small forms have been 100 and 120 species since 1993. Only a single mackerel shark was described in the Caucasian Catalogus of Megamouth shark. So far, the second known in the field of the Atlantic shark, so basking sharks in the Megamouth. Let's see. Um, I think that's a mistake right there, but 
a uh, typo, but uh, yeah, um, landforms represent 2.76% of overall shark diversity, and there's 543 species of sharks. Uh, so that that's grown a lot actually since I started, because I started with 514 species. So now we're at 543. So I I always had this like theory, this just gut feeling that there's a thousand shark species. It's a dumb gut th feeling, but like I feel like we can get there in my lifetime. Honestly, I think I think we can actually get there between exploring the deep ocean and then genetics. I think we can actually get to a thousand species. So we'll see. Um, all of the landforms are characterized by large body sizes compared to other sharks. Further, landform sharks are pelagic and dominated by fast swimming predators including the white shark and one of the most studied shark species. Their dentitions are adapted to their feeding habits. As active hunters, a larger part of landform dentition is adapted to capture fast swimming prey while others show serrated teeth for sawing purposes. Their characteristics large teeth Oh, sorry, their characteristic large teeth are well represented in the fossil record, and therefore landforms are considered to have the most complete fossil record of sharks. That's awesome. The phylogeny of landforms based on mitochondrial DNA sequence data support monophyla, monophyly of the order. However, interordinal relationships are not fully resolved or understood. Oh. So this is saying that We've got everything together when it comes to goblin sharks, mackerel sharks, crocodile shark, and megamouth, but we're kind of confused about thresher sharks, basking sharks, and sand tigers. Um, and then this is talking about how recently Carcaris was put in its own family. Here we present a morphological identification key with focus on jaw and tooth morphologies of landform sharks, allowing for genus and, if adequate materials, available species level identification. So this is cool. Okay, so here's Odontaspis neuronhi in Odontaspididae. Two formula. So if I'm reading that correctly, I forget which is which, but like I think the upper teeth are 40, the lower are 44. Total length when born is unknown. And then total length on record is 427 centimeters. So that's 13 feet long. So it's kind of cool comparing all of these. Like you can just see how big these are. Like you know, basket sharks are enormous, white sharks are what is that? Sorry, I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> White sharks could be 20 feet long. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, we don't really need to go through the material. Oh, except for... This is actually kind of cool, uh, these different tooth types. Clutching, tearing, cutting, crushing, grinding, clutching, grinding, cutting, grinding, and crushing, grinding. That's actually really cool. Oh, in landiform sharks, only three types are present. The cutting, tearing, and clutching type. That's actually really cool. Oh man, this is awesome. Okay, here we go. This is this is a cool table. I actually kind of love that laminiforms are such a small group because I think that actually makes a table like this even more effective. So here we go. So Odontaspis neuronhi is down here on the bottom. Um, so the first question, the first little thing is on the table. Usually one upper intermediate present, like a little symphysial tooth, I think, if I'm reading that correctly. So it's saying, yep, and I've seen this in my own uh, sand tiger shark jaw, so yep. Most of them are yes, goblin sharks are no, uh, big eye threshers are no, small tooth sand tigers are no. Okay. Uh, usually four upper intermediate present, no. Uh, uh, um, Odontaspis ferox is unique in that way. Let's see if there's things that are unique. Okay, sorry. So, so the thing that's unique about this species is that it is usually one upper intermediate tooth present, usually upper or lower symphysial teeth present. One pair. Oh no! 
Howard, look at this. One pair of cusplets present. It's saying yes, as like a diagnostic trait. But again, this guy has multiple pairs of cusplets. This actually might be a new species. This might be a new species. This actually might be a new species. Because, like, this is kind of crazy, actually. This is saying usually more than one pair of cusplets are present, and this is no for the big eye sand tiger. Oh, sorry. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't want an ad. Sorry. I, I got so excited. There's just no ads. Okay. So, Howard, I actually think you really truly hit on something because, you know, if this guide, which is, you know, super detailed, is saying, like, hey, big eye sand tigers just have one cusplet, they don't have multiple cusplets and then you've got a proposed big eye sand tiger with multiple tooth cusplets, this actually very well could be a different shark. So I think you actually hit something, and that's awesome. So congrats, because that's actually extremely cool. Um, and apparently, uh, big eye sand tigers uh, have a tearing tooth type. So that's actually really cool. Huh. It's interesting to describe the filter feeding sharks as clutching. Means, but very cool. Um, oh, hey! I just saw your comment, Lake Nicaragua shark. Yes, that is a really good name. If there is like, if they split up the um, like the South American bull sharks, I I don't think they would because I think the Atlantic is its own complex, and I think. Lake Nicaragua is connected to the Atlantic by a river, if I'm remembering correctly. So that might still be lumped in the classic bull shark category. However, if I'm wrong, and if it is like separate, I totally support Lake Nicaragua shark. That would be really cool because that, that was like a local legend. Like, like the Lake Nicaragua shark was definitely kind of like a charismatic, like legendary shark name. So Imagine how many prehistoric species there were. Oh my god, I can't, dude. That's that's so cool. Like like how how much material there is, or uh, one of the other sand tigers um, in black form. Oh hey, that's actually a really cool like concept. Like as far as like deep water prehistoric species, like you know, it's kind of weird to think about. Is like you know, are there certain areas in the abyss that you know no human can access that actually have like litterings of fossil teeth? That may reveal even more fossils, you know? It's so cool. Cool cool thought to think about. Um, let's see. Uh, land reform, but did tooth type. So this is likely from what they think is a small tooth sand tiger because of the multiple cusplets. It's not identifying which one this is from. And this is a dichotomous key, uh, kind of classifying it. So I do kind of want to work backwards. Usually, okay, so for the big eye sand tiger, Odontaspis neuronhi, usually one pair of thin hook-like cusplets present, upper and lower, lower lateral teeth with slender cusps, right? And then you like work backwards on this. I actually, now I'm kind of curious if they have like a jaw set. Like if they actually, well, here we go. All right. Well, what is this one? That is not a sand tiger. That is a, oh, this is a weird one. What is this? Oh, it's not going to identify what this is. Let's zoom out. Uh, while we're looking, uh, guesses on what this is? Hi. I'm gonna guess... I, don't, I really don't know what that is. Um, I'm gonna guess this is like a thresher shark. Uh, let's see. It is! Okay, here we go. Do I have that right? A, figure two. It is, sorry, Alopius pelagicus. This is a uh, pelagic thresher. So there we go, it is a thresher shark. Sorry. Um, I love that comment, Howard. No doubt there is so much we have yet to discover. Yes, like, I, I that, that is my favorite thing, just kind of like doing these streams, is just like, it's unbelievable 
how much we don't know about sharks still. Like, these are, you know, some of the most charismatic species, you know, or groups of animals ever. And it's just unbelievable how little we know about them. It's, it's wild. Okay, this is actually really cool. So we're going to get to our sand tiger tooth, but I like these jaw set photos. So uh, this one is Olopius vulpinus. This is the um, classic thresher shark. I kind of love. I kind of love. You can actually tell like these are a bit fatter. Like the the top teeth are a bit fatter. These are really cool jaws. All right. Oh man, white shark, right? Yep. Carcanon cacarius. This is the great white. Man, <laughs> those are wild teeth. Uh, man, white shark teeth are, are a thrill, I will say that. Just like those saws, just unbelievable. That's crazy looking. Uh, Icerus honxorhynchus is the mako shark. Oh, those are pretty nice. Um, I love that uh, another thing that we kind of like reviewed on the stream that uh, white sharks are kind of more or less a super evolved uh, mako. Um, that the group is rooted in um, Isurus, mako sharks, and then, you know, uh, over the course of evolution. Oh, this is a really nice one. This is a um, salmon shark, I think. Uh, I, th I think we just saw that on the. Um, no, no, this actually is a mako shark. Do I have this right? Sorry about that, that's a mako shark. Um, but anyway, uh, I think we were talking about fossil records one time, and um, apparently Carcadon, the white sharks, evolved within Isurus. So there was a group of mako sharks that got bigger and fatter, and you know were starting to take on whales, and eventually they became the white sharks, which is super cool. So... Uh, Lana Ditropis is the salmon shark. Lana Nassus is poor beagle. The creepy goblin shark jaw. With these long, thin, crazy needly teeth. Uh, that lower picture does not look like a goblin shark. That, that looks like a sand tiger shark, actually. And here we go, we're getting into sand tigers. So there's Carcaris taurus. Okay, Adonis ferox. Okay, so this is the small tooth sand tiger. And again, it has the tiny, the multiple cusplets right here. So there's multiple cusplets. And here we go, uh, Odontespis Naranhai, the big eye sand tiger, figure 9b. So, all right, we're talking about the distribution. We've already kind of gone through that. Sexual dimorphism not observed. So, okay. Upper jaw, most common, 20 rows of teeth. Usually no uh, parasympathesial tooth. That's kind of weird. Um, it's saying that it's 20 rows of teeth. In this crazy uh, individual, they are talking... How many did they say that this one had? 29 rows of teeth. And then the record is 34 to 37. So th these are varying kind of widely. Usually one pair of straight and the highest cusplets. Cusplets tend to point away from the central cusp. Straight and smooth. And that was the thing that was kind of like sticking out to me. Um, I think like a couple, like half an hour ago, there was a photo. Actually, yeah, where is the jaw set? It's somewhere here. Um, that, that little note right there was... Um, 
this thing I was noticing of like the cusplets are like kind of pointing away from like the central cusp. That's really it is really weird. It, it, it is something that um, never really noticed, or not not, not never not really noticed, but something that's like distinct of this kind of distinct in the species. Um, where is this article? Oh, there we go. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. This is no, the it's it's B. B is the one that is. Is that correct? Is this figure nine? That looks a little strange to me. That looks a little too thin. Unless this is, sorry, I just see this note about figure 10 is the crocodile shark. This is it. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So this is it. This one. This is it. This is it. Yep, this is it. Because it's, it's it has the uh, teeth right here. Sorry about that. So yeah, the cusplets are pointing away from the tooth. So this is the figure that they're talking about. This is figure 9B. This is the big eye sand tiger shark right here. So, nice close-up view of... Yeah, there's a couple tooth types that do look really unique. Like, this one looks really weird. Kind of curving backwards like this. Oh, sorry, uh, just catching up on comments. They should have made the White Shark Mako connection sooner, but they were obsessed with Megalodon being the ancestor Great White, despite a lot of evidence to the contrary. Bravo! Yeah, actually, start for that. Because, like, yeah, I, like, um, it's, <laughs> like, that is such a big misconception. Like, um, it was something I grew up with, too, like, just, like, a lot of fossil books. But, um, and that was another big thing, like, uh, I did not know, honestly, before the stream, I really did not know this, that, like, Megalodon was its own thing. Like, it just broke off from anything that became Mako Sharks and eventually White Sharks. So, like, yeah, bravo. I, 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 I like, it's, it's, it's just a completely different thing. And I think, isn't it the serrations that are a big giveaway? Like, White Sharks have serrated teeth and Megalodons have smooth teeth. And it's just, like, they, they just, the teeth look really different. Like, they're not, they're not, yeah. So... Yeah, bravo on that. Um, and yeah, good call, not the big eye. Yeah, when, when I was kind of like zooming further ahead, that was a crocodile shark tooth down there. So, but yeah. So it's actually really cool to have a close-up view of the jaw set that correlates to this animal. Because uh, this is such an awesome image, but it's just like the teeth are really fuzzy. Um, but even so, you can still kind of tell like that backwards curve. You can still kind of see it a little bit. And like like the audit the oddity of it all. So, but again, it is nice to see um, like a close up of the jaws of, of such a beautiful species. So, it's crazy. Man. So yeah, actually, honestly, for a shark that does not have a lot of research and you know that still has you know, a lot, like, there's still so much to discover about it. I think we actually kind of took a nice, like, um, you know, like, like, I think, I think we covered a lot, actually, you know, um, and the biggest one just kind of being the mystery of this guy, you know, just being like, this is a very bizarre individual, because it may not be the same as this, you know, even though they're purportedly the same species, um, because the cusplets on teeth are different, and um, the number of teeth are different. So uh, who knows? Uh, it's a really good research question uh, in terms of like, are there multiple big eye sand tigers hiding in plain sight? Um, is this actually a species complex? Um, you know, because this shark has such a sporadic distribution around the world. Like, are these all the same species or are these multiple kinds of sharks? So um, I don't know. That is up to future researchers to decide. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, I just saw your comment, Howard. Mako has smooth teeth that transitioned into serrated teeth and carcarius. Awesome, awesome. Atotus obliquus had smooth teeth that transitioned to serrated teeth in Megalodon. Oh, interesting. Gotcha. So 
I guess I got that wrong. I didn't realize that Meg had serrated teeth. So my apologies. I thought I, I, I got that part wrong. But anyway, so honestly, as far as land forms go, I think this is a really solid land form knight and a solid big eyes hand tiger knight for such a mysterious species. I think we did a pretty good job. And it's also really cool to come back to the stream um, with this shark and also with a shout out to the FAO guides. I think those are really cool resources and I've never seen that that bullhead shark we saw earlier. I had never seen that before, so that was a really cool, cool part of this night. But um, it's almost 11 over here, so I'm gonna probably wrap it up. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, next week we will cover the pig eye shark, Carcharhinus uh, amboinensis, uh, which is some. It, it, last time I checked, that looks so much like a bull shark that I would challenge anybody to. Oh, thanks, Howard. I appreciate that. Um, I love your comment. Thank you. It was a great stream. I really appreciate that. So yeah, I feel really good about it. I was a little worried because of like my brother's wedding weekend. Like honestly, I've been emotional all day. It's been such a good weekend, and I was a little worried about like, yeah, is this gonna be a weird stream? Am I gonna act weird and stuff? But I think this went really great. You know, perfect shark, uh, perfect vibe for this shark. So, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So yeah i'll see you next week for the pig eye shark uh, but until then i hope you have a great rest of your week and uh yeah i hope you i hope you guys are all enjoying a good summer and uh stay tuned for this i i'm curious if pig eye sharks are closer related to bull sharks because they look really really similar so but we'll find out so but take care cheers and we'll see you soon guys bye